If you've ever tried to set up Java for NeoVim, you know what a miserable experience it is. It seems there is always some issue no matter what you do. I hope that in this walkthrough I can spare you the pain from debugging your LSP. Now before we jump into Java, here are the prerequisites that I'll be using in this video. NVim CMP for our completion engine, CMP NVim LSP for our LSP sources to the aforementioned completion engine, mason.nvim, not necessary, but makes it super easy to install JDTLS. Now the actual plugin we're going to be using is nvim JDTLS. You may have heard of nvim-java, I don't recommend using that, it has plenty of issues and bloat. Now this plugin works great, except for a couple issues in the documentation. We're going to be using this configuration verbose section. Now the problem with this is it recommends putting this under FT plugin, which is antiquated and it's going to get you into a lot of trouble. For this, we're going to be setting up an auto CMD. Additionally, they list some complete configuration examples in the wiki. Now this first one over here has issues with it. You don't want to set up your configuration like this. This uses lazy nvim's FT declaration and config function, so Whenever we are in a file, a Java file, if we were to use this person's configuration, as soon as we open up the Java file, it starts up our LSP, and this will work fine for that workspace. Config function will run, and lazy nvim will consider this plugin loaded and never run config again. But say this symbol here, its scope is in another class file in a different workspace. This is going to open up that file, and nvim JDTLS will try and spin up an additional LSP client for this scope. Now, if we use this sample configuration here, it's going to throw an error. So what we need to do is set up an auto CMD. The auto CMD is going to do the same thing as FT plugin, except it's going to actually work flawlessly. Now jumping over to our NeoVim config, we have our CMP declarations here. We have our LSP declarations here. This is all under lazy nvim by the way. So we have our Mason, our Mason LSP config. If you're using Mason LSP config by the way, you're going to need to add this exclude here. If you don't add this exclude, Mason LSP config is going to try and enable JDTLS on its own, but we need to give JDTLS special treatment. This way we can still install JDTLS using Mason and have our Mason LSP config set up the other LSP servers that we want and still get the benefit of using NVim JDTLS. Now over here, we have obviously our NVim JDTLS. Now under our after directory, I have this plugin folder and lsp.lua and this is where I'm gonna define our auto CMD for NVim JDTLS. We have nvim.api.nvimCreateAutoCMD and the event for this AutoCMD is going to be file type. This is the exact same as if we were to make FT plugin except this works much better. Pattern is going to be Java, so this is going to work for class files as well as normal Java files. Callback is going to be the function that gets called when we open a Java file, and we're going to call require jdtls.jdtls setup.setup. You can do whatever you want for this, but this is what I have. So jdtls is the folder, jdtls setup is the file, and then dot setup is the function inside of this file. Now for this, we're going to copy pretty much everything that this guy has or the verbose configuration in the main readme. Now we're going to copy this and just supplement our directories and our version of JDTLS. So we can come over here, we can keep this workspace directory, we're going to need to set this to something that we want. I have it just stored in a development folder called JDTLS underscore data. Now over here. We want to make sure that this points to Java 21. If you only have Java 21 installed, it's okay. You can just use normal, just Java. But if you have multiple versions of Java installed, you're gonna need to have this. All this is fine. We can leave this unchanged. Here, obviously, we're gonna need to change this to our version. You might wanna find this file under this directory, and you can just copy the name of it, including the .jar. 
and paste it into here. This is the jar we're going to use. Must point to the eclipse.jdtls installation. You're going to want to come to this directory and point it to your operating system for me. I'm under config Linux, obviously. And then you can leave this as it is, as long as you have defined this up here. And then at the end of all this, we want to require jdtls.start or attach and then pass in our config. Now to show you this actually works in a real world project here, I have a big Minecraft mod here. And we're going to just enter here with vim period. And we're gonna find a file here. So we're gonna come under source main, blah, blah, blah. Come over here, fossilmod.java. And if you did it right, you're gonna see something in the corner there. You're gonna see starting Java language server. All right. So now we can test if this works. We can also come over here and go LSP info. And we can see that JDTLS is loaded here. So what we want to do is test if this works. So we can do a hover here. Okay, this works. We can see logger, log manager. Um, this is a decompiled source. Let's see if this works. Let's come over here. All right, our go to definition works. And to see if our LSP started up in this, scope we can do this okay and then we can come over here all right so this all works and then we can test if our lsp um completion sources are here so we can basically just type this in here static final okay logger it seems to be bringing everything up here log manager yes tab get logger all this works and it's obviously throwing an error there as well syntax error which is perfect so everything seems to be working we can even come over here to go to references see what happens all right and then our telescope references were brought up now if you're a more stingy java developer and want these extensions here you can simply key map them like i've done here under general lsp attach except you can just put this under our callback function we made for this auto cmd now if you want debugging you're going to have to install nvim debug adapter protocol made by the same person so you can really get this to be no different than if you were to use eclipse or even IntelliJ. if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more like it consider subscribing thanks for watching